Well, it's fair to say I love that light output of halogen work light. There are just two things I don't like about this particular unit. Number one, it's 110 volt powered, and where I was going to be using it might be subject to, of course, some possible water. And then if you've ever used one and got too up close and personal with it, you know that you can get a pretty nasty little first or second degree burn off of it. As far as light output, here's pretty much a sample of what it'll put out about six feet away from the wall in this case. And remember this because we're going to do a comparison with the LED when we're finished. One of the goals I'd set for myself on this project was the ability to go back. In other words, if I decided I wanted to take the LEDs out of service and return it to a halogen work light, I could without any trouble. So everything I'm going to do here, of course, can be easily reversed. First step, of course, is just take out the halogen bulb. After that, it's time to go ahead and take out the reflector. In the case of this unit, it's just held in place by a single screw that goes to the very back of the connector. In this case, a Phillips screwdriver, and just a couple seconds, takes it right out. Now, the next little step, of course, is to get the reflector out. And in this case, that's not too bad. You just have to pinch up on the edges, and it'll pop right out. Now, it's time to go ahead and remove the halogen bulb holder. In this case, it's held in place by two screws, again, bolted to the very back of the fixture. Both are Phillips. Both come out fairly easy. And in this case, I'm not going to damage this actual holder just in case I decide I want to put the halogen light back. Now, my initial thought here was I'd go ahead and keep this rear bracket and use it as part of my new assembly, but it proved to be impossible without breaking the ceramic fixtures on the ends that support the bulb. So I just went ahead and took out the entire bulb holder and went with a different method. Now, when it comes to the junction box, I definitely want to keep the little junction box and keep the switch and keep it as watertight as I can. In this case, I definitely realize that converting it to DC is going to lose the watertight integrity, but I'm okay with that. Now, just to speed up the process, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the wire nuts, separate all the wires, and I'll go ahead and remove the ground, too, since I'm going to DC. I don't think I'm going to need the ground anymore. Now, the next item on my agenda is to go ahead and remove the 110-volt cord. I'm going to go with a plug-in connection. And this one is going to get battery backup inside the fixture, too, so I don't need this heavy-duty cord. These are my new parts I'll be putting in the fixture. The big plate is for actually mounting the LEDs on. It's a piece of stainless steel that I've cut and notched to size. Then there's a back plate that actually mounts to the actual fixture. And then a standoff series that mounts into the back plate and then holds the front plate in place at the front of the fixture after the LEDs, of course, are installed. Here's a shot of the LED mounting plate, the standoff, and then the actual back plate that will mount to the fixture. And here's the mounting plate and the standoff series that actually hold things together. A long bolt and a short piece of tubing will work just as well as this is. I just happen to have the standoffs, so I decided to go ahead and use those. And here's the whole thing installed in the fixture, less the LEDs. Now, let's take a look at the LEDs. I looked around for a while to try to decide what would be the best LEDs to use for this application. I finally decided on a vendor off of eBay. These LEDs are 12 volt DC with an adhesive back on them, so it's easy to mount them. A little bit high density LEDs, 528 LEDs per meter. And they're also dimmable if I want to breeze or lower the brightness. And here are the LEDs mounted on the backing plate. The black strips leader end are electrical tape, and you'll see why in just a second. Well, they say that you can cut these with a scissors. And I'm going to say yes and no. The biggest problem with cutting them with a the scissors is it wants to draw on you. Which means, of course, you're going to get a bunch of uneven cuts like I've got here. I'm not sure the best way to cut these, probably a sharp knife and then use scissors, but yeah, it's very difficult to cut these straight. The LEDs are placed on the backing plate in a pair configuration, where possible ground, paired with ground, or hot, paired with hot. It's also wired with two headers, meaning the ground on the left and the hot on the right. The grounds and the hots are jumped together on opposite sides of their respective headers. The headers are wired with 20 gauge bare copper wire, which would be more than enough to cover the amperage of this LED panel. Here's a close up of what the main power connections for hot and ground look like. 
Now, before you go at me on my wiring, yeah, true, it could have been neater, but it definitely works. This one was my first and a learning experience. I'll definitely do better next time. And there will be a next time. I'm looking at making some more of these little LED panels. Word to the lies, make sure that you tin the actual LED connection points first before soldering the wires to them. Makes things go a whole lot smoother. The battery is put together with three 18650 lithium ion cells. There is also a battery protection circuit that's wired in with all of this. Here's the DC power connector. I'm using a 16 volt wall wart style power supply to either charge or power the LEDs directly off of the household current. In addition, there's a 7812 solid state voltage regulator. I installed this just so that I could still have the power plugged in and be using the 12 volt lights and not worry about doing damage to the LEDs or low voltage. As to how well my new LED light works, well, here's what it looks like right now at the same relative position as the original halogen bulb. And here's the comparison. Here's the original halogen bulb with the fixture in the exact same relative position of the wall. Well, that about wraps this one up again. Hope you found this interesting and useful. If you did, definitely consider giving me a like and definitely consider subscribing. I've got quite a few other little projects coming on pretty soon. I think you will see. Until I pass across again, you all take care now, yeah?